Good morning, everyone, and welcome back to theCUBE's live coverage of the Snowflake Data Cloud Summit here at the Moscone Center. I'm Rebecca Knight, your host, alongside my co-host and analyst, Dave Vellante. Day four of the conference, let's talk about supply chain. Yeah, well, so two years ago, Frank Slootman on theCUBE off camera said to me, Dave, you should look into supply chain. It's a really hard data problem, and it's a really interesting one that I think you'd be into researching, and uh, so, yeah, and there are companies some, that are also working on the problem and trying to solve it. And I'm excited to have these guys on. Indeed, well indeed, but let me introduce our next guest to theCUBE. Duncan Angove, he is the CEO of Blue Yonder. Welcome back to theCUBE, Duncan. Morning. And Tyler Prince, SVP Worldwide Alliances and Channels at Snowflake. Thanks so much. Tyler, great to have you. Good to be here. So, I want to start with you, Duncan. Why don't you tell our viewers, I know you've been on theCUBE, you've told your story, but tell us a little bit about Blue Yonder. So we're the largest uh, supply chain software company in the world. Uh, we run just the largest brands you can imagine across a multitude of different industries from retailing to semiconductor to automotive to CPG. Um, and we do all the warehouse management, all the transportation, all the e-commerce, and then more importantly, all of the AI-based forecasting, replenishment, inventory management, um, all of that. So that's basically what we do. So we know that these, as Dave said, these are hard problems to solve. So why do, in terms of bringing data to the supply chain, why do organizations struggle with this so mightily? So the, the volumes in supply chains surpass pretty much any other category of enterprise software. I mean, these are billions and billions of, of permutations. When you think about a retailer, the number of SKUs, the number of stores they have, and you do the, the mathematics on that, it's, it's huge. And it's an AI problem at massive scale. Um, you know, so for example, every day on Snowflake, Blue Yonder runs 10 billion machine learning workloads, right? It's applied AI at scale and it's, and it's authentic. And those are basically predictions, predicting demand so you know what to buy and, and, and where, to, where to put it. But because of those kind of volumes and the mission criticality of supply chain, it's always been a very siloed data environment and a very diverse application topology. Where you, and it just, and it, it, it just makes it very, very difficult to run supply chains in a coordinated way when you have all of these data silos and you're moving data around, it adds a lot of batch and latency and it's very, very inefficient. But there hasn't been the technology available to basically solve that problem. So they, the industry over 30 years has just broken it up into discrete problems to solve it. So Tyler, uh, when Sridhar was here earlier, I asked him, are you a data, a, a, a data cloud company, an AI company, or an application platform for intelligent you know, data apps? And he said, yeah, basically. <laughs> yes, that's correct. That's right. So that new vector of growth, obviously ISVs uh, like Blue Yonder are very critical to that future vision. So I wonder if you could sort of talk about the progress that you guys are making, the alliances that you have, and the traction that you're getting in that regard. Happy to, and, and certainly Sridhar would have articulated the, this, this idea of being a, a platform and a generational platform in the technology industry. And every platform, if you think back in the, in the history of our industry, has had a robust ecosystem to support it. An ecosystem of people building apps and bringing data uh, uh, and other technology integrations, including services providers, certainly the, some of the largest uh, GSIs in the world, like Accenture, Deloitte, EY, uh, but literally thousands of system in, implementation firms that can help customers get value out of it but every platform requires that robust ecosystem to, to really bring the platform to life for customers across every industry. And so we're thrilled to be working so closely with Blue Yonder. Uh, th th think, think about how iconic that is to, to, to really come together and, 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 and deliver the value Duncan just talked about, which is to, to really bring the data to life and be able to share that up and down the supply chain for so many customers. You know, Duncan, we don't talk about COVID anymore, but I remember you and I were talking during COVID about the future of bringing the digital and physical worlds together. Mm -hmm. And that is happening now, sort of forced by COVID, we all know that. But you've always had a fascination with, with that sort of concept. And how do you see, where are we today, and how do you see that playing out generally and specifically in supply chain? It's been a massive catalyst for people to step back and actually reimagine how supply chain software should support sort of a new blueprint for how supply chains run. If you look at the last 30 or 40 years, right, what's sort of powered the world in a way is two concepts around supply chain. One is China as a factory for the world, uh, globalization, all of that. And the second thing has been just in time, those two things together. And the pandemic sort of exposed the emperor has no clothes, that that's actually a flawed model in today's world, particularly when it's exacerbated by siloed applications that support it. 
So companies are looking for resiliency. And sort of the way they responded to it is by building up inventory. So uh, JP Morgan did a study of the S&P 1500 and they said in the last two years, working capital has increased 40%. That's $500 billion of extra inventory sitting on someone's balance sheet that's not being invested back in the consumer or growth. And our premise is the answer to resiliency is not inventory, it's software. But not the software we traditionally had where it's these different silos that don't allow you to operate in a, in a coordinated way across departments and across enterprises. And that's where the data cloud is so powerful all your data in one place, one version of the truth across the enterprise. You're moving applications to the data and it allows you to operate in a speed and in a way you can coordinate that was unprecedented before this technology came along. So, I'll tell a little story and get your perspective and you can explain sort of how you're going to solve this problem. So, I was traveling, uh, my wife was away and she said, hey, we're getting this furniture delivery at the house, uh, it's two pieces. Can you, can you get home in time to, to be there when they deliver it? I, yeah, I can figure that out. So I get there, one piece shows up, they drop it off and they leave it, where's the other one? <laughs> uh, we only have one. The other one's coming you know, mm -hmm. tomorrow. I'm like, well, I'm not going to be here tomorrow. Okay. Mm -hmm. so my wife's like, why does that happen? Mm -hmm. Now, speaking to you, I kind of know <laughs> why that happens. Yeah. You can explain it better than I can, yeah. but I'm more interested in how you're going to solve that. So that happens because even though we call it a supply chain, people don't really operate. Like a chain implies that the links are all connected. And the dirty secret is they're not. Because again, everyone has their different incentives. This person runs the warehouse. They care about these metrics. This person runs transportation. This person runs order management and e-commerce, right? And that, so not only are they not really coordinating within an enterprise, they're certainly not doing it with their carriers or their suppliers or things like that. So what happens is someone builds the perfect plan, they're going to deliver it, those two things to your house on that day, but the plan never survives the light of day because of disruptions and uncertainty. Maybe you get to the warehouse and the robot went along it and that item was damaged, the second item. Or Bob and Bill went on a bender last night and didn't show up for work, <laughs> right? So, but there's no coordination. When something happens, how can, you, how can you react in a coordinated way in real time to actually resolve that, right? And that's why if you bring all of the data together into one data cloud and you run all the applications on it and you, and you design these applications to actually talk to each other, you actually enable cross-functional excellence and orchestration, you solve that exact problem. And that is a ginormous shift. I mean, just in terms of the way organizations, how the supply chain used to work and how organizations used to run and how there were these mini fiefdoms within organizations. I run the warehouse, I run the transportation. So describe for me, Tyler, how you also help organizations deal with this massive change management issue. Yeah. You know, that's exactly why you know, the secret sauce of Snowflake is the ability to share data among business partners and that's why the, the supply chain story is so incredible because it's all about the data and sharing that as quickly and securely uh, in a very compliant way with your business partners, not just, just me to you and not just in the examples, but up and down that supply chain real time. So that's the, the real value of in, empowering that. Now, driving that sort of solution is, is, is critical to help these customers get that right because what, what we just described between the two of us is game changing, right, for that supply chain every, and every player within that supply chain. So helping them understand how to get the value out of the data and how to change their business process to, to, to operate in this real-time world uh, is, a, is, a, is a, critical, a critical step in this. So, it, because it goes from, from an asynchronous batch job into something that's near real-time. Mm -hmm. I mean, as close to real-time as you can possibly get. I guess I would define real-time before the truck leaves without the other piece of furniture, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. It some, sends a signal, you've got all those coordinated efforts. What does it require, however, to do that? What are the assumptions that you need? You've got to have the data inside a snowflake. You've been clear on that. What else? do you have to have? So it's a good point. I mean, one of the things that has plagued supply chain software is it's batch oriented, right? And it's batch oriented because there's a ton of data, there's a lot of compute where you're running billions of permutations, like the 10 billion a day we do. So it's always been done in batch because you haven't had an architecture like you get with a data cloud where you have access to elastic compute. Right, and, and technicalities around zero copy cloning and separating storage from compute. So it allows us to do things we've never been able to do before and if, in essence, eliminate batch, right, which is, is the latency that you have in supply chain. It's sort of like, you remember the old military thing, the UDU, the observe, orient, decide, oh, yeah. act thing? And it was all about getting inside your competitor's UDU loop. So that's really what we're trying to do. 
And if you think about supply chains, all our metrics are founded in speed and time. On time in full, just in time, how fast are your turns, like all, flow, all of these things, right? So what Snowflake allows us to do is inject speed in that Udo loop, right? Get rid of batch, get rid of the hourglass, deploy infinite compute. So that's a big part of it, right? The second part is it needs to be event driven. So if stuff happens, like someone went down the aisle and saw that the second item of your furniture was damaged, right? That event is a prompt into a generative AI, right? The event itself is, what should I do? This second item is not available. And then it calls different APIs, different solvers, different AI algorithms to figure out how to solve it on behalf of the human, right? So that's really what it is. It's Snowflake with an event-driven architecture wrapped around it. And you can update that in, in, in near real time. Yep. How are you using, two, two questions, how are you using knowledge graphs and where do agents fit into this? So, um, as you know, we use relational AI yep. as our semantic layer, the knowledge graph that sits on, and by the way, it's perfectly oriented supply chains, because supply chains are all about relationships. This product, this supplier, this brand, this, like it's this store, like it's very um, well tuned to that. So that gives us really, really strong um, AI capabilities, because for language models and agents, it brings context and semantic meaning to the underlying data, right, which is critical for it. And on top of that, we deploy agents. So for every end user we have in the supply chain for Blue Yonder, whether it's an allocator, a planner, a warehouse operator, right, we deploy an agent that augments what they do. And it's attached to our intelligence, our ML, our solvers, all of that. It's, think of it as a calculator for the supply chain. Everyone knows generative AI isn't terribly good at math today, right? So this is like a calculator for the supply chain. Um, and it's connected to our execution APIs. So it can't just figure out what to do, it can actually affect the physical world. It's a bridge from digital physical. So that's basically what we're doing from an agent perspective. How much AI do you have to develop and, and what AI do you want to get from Snowflake? Like where do, you, where do you leave off and Snowflake picks up or vice versa? So we leverage Snowflake as sort of part of the, think of it as almost like the middleware for AI and all, all of that, right? And we obviously develop our own intellectual property around machine learning algorithms, generative AI. We filed 70 AI patents alone last year. We did 17 in Q1 just around generative AI applied to supply chain. So that's a core component of what we do. You know, supply chains were always the birthplace of ops research and back in the day yeah, it was right. the beer run and all of that. And you know, so we've been doing AI for over a decade now, like authentically, and we're not just, we didn't just add .ai to our domain name, you know? <laughs> so it was natural to extend that into the generative AI field, and that's where all the investments that Snowflake's made and what we're doing there, a lot of stuff was announced, you know, earlier this week. We're taking advantage of, of all of that to basically accelerate the delivery of what I've talked about. And, and if I could just add, I yeah, think that's please. why we're seeing quite a bit of excitement even here in this room around, around third parties, these innovative companies that can focus on what their core business is and the domains that they're serving uh, around supply chain or bank or whatever the, the, the industry or business process might be, but it allows them to focus on those core competencies and leverage the innovation that we're driving in the world of data and AI, because it's complicated, right? And so the things that we're solving allow them to focus on other things. So, Tyler, how big an opportunity does supply chain represent to, to Snowflake? I mean, as we've said, we've painted this picture of it is a massive problem for organizations large and small. It, it, it's a massive problem, a massive opportunity, but it is also dependent on a tremendous amount of data. Like, it's almost mind-boggling to think about the, the, the amount of data. I, I think it probably, you would know the, the numbers, it probably trumps the idea of, of, of customer data, as an example. The supply chain data that's up and down that supply yeah. chain because it, cut, it, it touches every part, of the, every part of the company. It includes customer data, but it includes uh, manufacturing data, inventory data, financial data, and so on. So I, I, I think it's a massive, a massive opportunity. Uh, and I think that's probably what attracted Duncan and his team to, to Snowflake, is our ability to process and manage and, and, and govern that much data. What was the inventory stat you gave earlier? Um, well, just in, just in ML predictions, it's 10 billion a day. And it's probably growing by a billion every month, right? So the scale of this is, is incomprehensible. And it's not running in a batch-based architecture, right? So, you know, in essence, you know, we talk about our shared vision of building the supply chain operating system for the world, where anywhere trade and commerce and the supply chains take place, it runs on our software rails. I mean, it, it, it's like part of national infrastructure. You know, we, we had a, um, I made a video for a press conference in Tokyo a couple of years ago, and the whole premise of the thing was, can you get through the day without touching something that Blue Yonder put there? right? And you wake up in the morning, you've got Lululemon on, you open the fridge, there's a Dan and yogurt, there's a Dasani water bottle, you get in your Mercedes Benz, you stop at Starbucks, you order Petco. I want like, that person's life, yeah, yeah. that's <laughs> a nice life. <laughs> right, so literally, like, 
it's everything that we interact with. I mean, it's, it's there. Like you, you, you see a postal truck, it's there because we put it there. And the parcels on it are on there because we put it there, right? So we, we touch so much in the world. And you just think about the volumes and the complexity of all of that. And every day there's disruption, you know? And companies are operating in an age of uncertainty. I mean, in a way, it's, that's a further catalyst to actually step back and reimagine traditional approaches. So earlier this week, Blue Yonder was recognized as Snowflake's Retail and Consumer Goods Data Cloud Product Partner of the Year. I mean, as you said, your, your company is enormous and touches so much of our daily life. But what does this recognition mean to you as an organization? We have a very, very deep partnership with Snowflake. Uh, we have a shared vision around where we think the world should go as it relates to supply chains. Dave, you said it, supply chain is fundamentally a data problem and it always has been. Um, and Snowflake are uniquely positioned to solve that. And when you take our intellectual property and you combine it with that, it's a very, very compelling proposition. So we do a ton of work in R&D with Snowflake. Our teams are locked together. Um, because if Snowflake can solve the challenges of supply chain and the volumes and the complexity and the compute and the scale, they can solve it in any industry, right? So we have a, and we have a very, very strong go-to-market partnership as well. Right? We had uh, Jeremy Burton on the other day. He's the CEO of Observe. Yep. And that's an example where a, a new software company can come in. Observe can come in, run on top of Snowflake. They can disrupt New Relic. Um, it's, it, what I like about what you're doing with Blue Yonder, you could easily just kind of milk it and you know, do the EBITDA thing, mm -hmm. but instead you're transforming the company, you're, you're rewriting your stack on top of Snowflake, you've got things like relational AI, which is highly advanced, and so obviously you're paranoid, uh, <laughs> but, but it's very difficult yeah. to not, not only disrupt supply chain, but actually reinvent it. So that's really what I like about w w what you're doing. Um, what's in the future for you guys? So, you so we, you know, we, the company's built on innovation, it's what we believe, and that's why I told you we constantly file new patents and we're constantly trying to reimagine the world. Supply chain software has been too incremental across the landscape, you know, and no one's actually stepped back and say, how do we drive a step change on top of new technology that reflects the, the reality of how, what's happening in supply chain today. You know, we spent a billion dollars in M&A in the last six months. We're spending a billion dollars in R&D over the next 18 months. So there's a massive commitment here at, at a scale that people have not seen in investment. So it's, wow, well, it's the perfect storm. I mean, you got, you know, you got all this uncertainty happening and wake up every day and we have AI, robotics, and the data cloud, right? Well, beautiful new canvas on which to reimagine all of this. Yeah, very bold vision, Duncan. Mm -hmm. Really appreciate you guys coming on. Mm -hmm. Yep. Sharon, indeed, thank you. Indeed, thank and you. I just want to ask one last question for Duncan, and I know you had said earlier that the supply chain is all about relationships, and, and you were talking about the relationships between mm -hmm. organizations and departments, but it's also about human relationships, and I, I was reading your leadership bio where you talked about striving to have a diverse organization centered around camaraderie and passion and purpose, and I'm, I'm just curious, as a leader or of an organization, how you think about the kinds of traits you're looking for in employees, particularly as we are at this real inflection point with what the the future of work looks like? So, um, you know, it, it, purpose is very important. So we call our sustainable abundance. And sort of, the, if you unpack that a little bit, the, the, the two prongs to our is, is first of all is sustainability. Supply chains are sort of guilty of creating a lot of food waste, apparel waste, carbon emissions, 60% of all the carbon emissions. So how do, we, how do we make supply chains more sustainable? Ironically, having the behave in a more joined up way actually does help. There's a lot of, I'll call it green leakage between silos. Um, and the second thing is around abundance. You know, supply chains have delivered so much benefit all to, to, to mankind. If you go back to the Silk Road, I mean, it lifted billions of people out of poverty. And, but invention and technology has always been the amplifier of those benefits, right? The invention of money, the steam engine, the internet, the shipping container, all of those things. And, um, so our goal is how do we use tech, and by the way, they create abundance. They turn, technology turns scarcity into abundance, right? Food, clothing, electronics, medicine, all of those things. So our sort of goal is how do we leverage all this technology and the data cloud to usher in this next wave of abundance, um, but do it in a more sustainable way. So that's a big part of our purpose. Um, and we, have, we want people here at Blue Yonder that are driven by reimagining what's possible. Um, and innovating and challenging conventional thinking. It's a big, big part of, of, of what drives the company. 
Excellent. Well, again, thank you yep. both for coming on theCUBE. Great to be here. Thank you. Good, thank you. Good, Good to, to see you, you again. Thanks. Thank you. I'm Rebecca Knight for Dave Vellante. Stay tuned for more of theCUBE's live coverage of the Snowflake Data Cloud Summit. You're watching theCUBE, the leader in enterprise tech news and analysis.